I would have sleep paralysis that was like, it, it was like sexual sleep paralysis. I realized that I would weirdly get spiritual attack having premarital sex with people. Wow. And yeah. I realized that because I had sleep paralysis and I saw a demon in my room that was a half goat, half human, and it scared the living bejeebies out of me. And this is whenever I knew Jesus. So I would call out to Jesus. That's how I like knew Jesus is real. Because every time I called out to him when I was scared, when I was under some kind of demonic attack or sleep paralysis, I would wake up and I would feel peace and like knew that, okay, I'm good. Yeah. So when earlier about how having calling out to Jesus and like demons flee in the name of Jesus, they really do. Whenever we were sexually active, I had this weird sleep paralysis and I saw a goat leg man in my room. And I'm really scared. And this is like earlier on in our relationship where I'm thinking he's going to think I'm so weird to tell him this. And he yeah. said, oh, that's so weird. Because as a kid, I had a reoccurring nightmare about a goat man in my dreams. What? And that's when it clicked. And I started thinking like, after I would have sex with like my boyfriends at the time, I would have sleep paralysis. Mm. Started around the time that I started, like after I lost my virginity, I would start having sleep paralysis. I would be like different beings every time that would kind of freak me out. And so, yeah, isn't it crazy how I was saying this in one of my TikToks? Like, demons love like sex. Like, demons love sexual immorality. They are they. I feel like it like feeds them energy. Yeah, there's um, I've looked into it a little bit. There's these demons in like throughout history they go by different names but they literally do they they feed off your sexual energy whenever you have sleep paralysis and like say you have like a sexual dream sleep paralysis mm -hmm. so um once I became abstinent it's whenever that's whenever like the attacks got really bad I was having severe sleep paralysis I, I, I would call it to Jesus and it but it was still scary like yeah before you realize what's going on um so one of the most profound times is after we started being abstinent um, in my current relationship, I was having a dream that he was going to come pick me up for a date. And so I was getting ready for the date in the dream. And I sat on my bed in the, in the dream and I laid down and in my dream, I couldn't wake up and he was coming to come pick me up for this date. Hmm. And I hear him come in my house and he's walking up the stairs. And now it's like reality and my dream are merged together where I'm laying in my bed sleeping. Oh, Actually, wow. dream I'm sleeping. And I can't get up and I hear him come inside the house and he's like, Tatum, I'm here. Are you ready for the date? And I'm trying to wake up to tell him like, I can't wake up. Help. I can't wake up. And I hear him coming up the stairs and he's like, Tatum, Tatum. He's saying my name. And as he's getting closer and closer, the voice is getting darker and darker. Oh my goodness. I realize I'm having sleep paralysis. That's not, that's not my man coming upstairs. That is a demon. And I, I really felt like I had like this, these sexual demons that would prey on me. And I hear it get closer and closer. And at this point, I'm fighting. Like, and it takes me a while to call out to Jesus in these moments, like yeah. to realize one and become conscious and call out. Yeah. So I'm over here, I wake up, trying to open my eyes, and I can't move my body. And the demon is standing next to my bed, saying my name in the most scariest, nastiest, ugliest voice I've ever heard. And I eventually I call out to Jesus, and it was like a bomb went off. It was. I just saw white light. My ears were physically ringing for like, as if, you know, the ringing noise after a bomb goes off yeah. and I sat up and I felt so much peace and like that everything was taken care of. But it, that was like the scariest, like sleep paralysis situation that I ever had. And it was just funny because as soon as I became abstinent, it was like, this demon was like, Oh, you're abstinent now. Let me come try to like, ah. pray on you. as my, basically my most recent sexual partner, trying to it was disguising itself as yeah. which is interesting like what if I would have had the dream because my sleep paralysis dreams are sexual attacks sexual demonic attacks yeah and like if it's like a demon trying to have sex with you in that realm yeah and I've, I've done a lot of research on it that that is a thing I relate the big scary demon that I saw in my ex-boyfriend like it, as his face is like warping and all these things and he's like looking over me, like I literally felt my woman area felt so unsafe. I felt like this demon was coming for for that, mm -hmm. you know. And I and his boyfriend was coming from that. Like after I stopped having sex with him, I realized it was all flesh, and I was like, wow, like this demon is using him as a portal 
to have sex with me. Yeah. And I do really think like there's a reason why we're told to wait until marriage. And it's not because of like. Yes. Because like, he just covers, he covers the marriage bed. He protects the marriage bed. Right. Everything else, like if you're having sex outside of marriage, that bed is not protected. Right. And that's, it lets in those little, those feeble little creepy crawlies, the spiritual creepy crawlies that yeah. want to suck your energy basically. So Oof. I, yeah, I, and it's funny because at first whenever like I became absent and I would have like weird sexual dreams. I would be like, oh, that's because I'm asked, like, I'm not used to being abstinent. Like, you know, I'm a sexual person. That's normal. Then once I started realizing that, oh, no, that's a demonic attack. That's when sleep paralysis, whenever I started resisting the sexual dreams, mm -hmm. I turned into sleep paralysis. And there's been a handful of times that I've literally seen the demon, like, sitting in the room, just waiting for me to, like, let it basically, like, have me in that way. Yeah. Oh, gross. It sounds so weird. It sounds crazy. No, I but get it, though. Yeah, I get it and you get it. And I do think that there's people out there that get it too. A lot of people won't understand, but the people that do understand, like they need to hear us talk about this. Yeah. And literally calling out to Jesus is the only thing that has gotten no back in the new age stuff. Cause this happened in the new age stuff as well. No crystals, no little mm. nothing. But, and I wonder whenever I had that profound experience, whenever, um, I woke up and I cried out to Jesus because I was so terrified. There's a chance it had something to do with a sleep paralysis demon like this preying on me because that was very common, especially as I started getting, it's like the more I started getting towards the light and the truth in Jesus, um, that's whenever like the darkness amped up and I started having more sleep paralysis and started actually seeing the, the demons. And yeah, it's like when you're in it, they don't have to like threaten you like this. But then when you're not in it, and you're not playing in their ball ground anymore, they do like you see them like you see the spook in it. It's no longer like, oh, it's a spirit guide, this or that. No, you see it for its true colors. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the sleep paralysis demons, I don't know if you've heard, I feel weird saying like the name of them. It's an incubus and a succubus and they happen to men and women. That's what I've, I've heard of this actually. Yeah. My dad even, he, so my dad's a truck driver. He's crazy. That like my what? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. My dad is like a big sexual deviant. Like he's, he's bad, bad. Like it's terrible. And he had this dream when he was like out on the road that well, and it wasn't even a dream. He said he woke up and he couldn't move. He was sleeping in the bed of the truck. He couldn't move. And somebody was holding him down. Like somebody was physically holding him down. And he says he like looks up and it's like a woman figure. Mm -hmm. And my dad, he's not super spiritual. He doesn't talk about spiritual stuff. But like he called me and like told me he's like, you know, this woman thing was like holding me down. And then he like was like fighting it and like gets up and he sees this like woman, like this woman being like leave his truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a, ma there's a male version that attacks women and there's a female version that preys on men. Wow. So this is why people need to be abstinent before marriage because these right. things are out there and they're hunting us. Yes. Yeah, so they literally, and I don't know like what the purpose is, like are, what did, what is the, what are they taking from you? Like, right. it's weird. Is it just the energy? I'm not really sure. Yeah, it's, but I definitely know that it's like a, I feel like a champion whenever I'm able to realize what's going on, yeah. call out this, and I, like, they have to flee. It's like, not this time, can't get me, like. <laughs> yeah, that's why God says stay vigilant, mm -hmm. stay vigilant. It sucks, though. It's like, even when you sleep, you got to stay vigilant, even when you sleep. I know, I actually had a bad dream last night, and I know that. I'm watching shows I should not be watching and it's creating, it's like all these little ways we open portals that we don't even think about. Cause it's like, Oh, like this is just, you know, a show everybody's watching it. Like, it's fine. You know, it's just a dating show. No, my husband, like he was voicing that he had a problem with this show. And then I have like a really bad sexual dream last night. So it's crazy that we are talking about this. It wasn't like a demon or anything like this, but it was me doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and I wake up and I was convicted because I'm opening these, I had opened these portals and watching these, these shows. And so it's, yeah, it's just like, we have to 
keep ourselves protected from all of that kind of stuff because they look for any way in. Right. And that's something like, as in, I, there's like a lot of things in like, I've seen online and talking about like being anti-purity culture, like purity culture is bad. Don't tell young women like to wait until marriage or, and it's kind of like, I sit there and I'm like, I actually, as an adult, after going through what society tells me is like, okay. And that I should do after going through that, like looking into like, how do I actually remain pure, not just sexually, but pure in like my whole life. Purity isn't just about like sexual purity. It's about just pursuing Christ, living a wholesome life. Um, but protecting ourselves from impure things, including like, I, I try to avoid like vulgarity and like super raunchy shows and things it, I'm not perfect at it sometimes I'm watching a show and something happens yeah. like, <laughs> but yeah. I do that that does it like we're told to do that because it we are called to guard our hearts and minds 